Interleaved Power Factor Correction by Microchip. Welcome to the training module on Power Factor Correction. Today's training outline consists of Introduction to Power Factor Correction, Interleaved Power Factor Correction Design Overview, Reference Design, and Conclusion. The power factor is defined as the ratio between the real power and the apparent power in an AC circuit. The real power represents the net transferred energy transferred to the load over one complete AC cycle, while the reactive power represents the fraction that is only temporarily stored by the load. The real power is the one measured and monitored for power consumption and its associated energy being used to produce mechanical work and heating. Traditionally, the power factor is associated with the cosine of angle between the real and apparent power components. For simplicity, the apparent power can be presented as the vector sum of the real and reactive power, but in the case of a non-sinusoidal periodical signal, a more complex relationship between these components is considered. A power factor correction block diagram can be divided into three main blocks. First, the rectifier, which provides DC voltage to the power factor correction converter stage. Next is the power factor correction converter itself, which provides the control over the current shape and phase lag while regulating the output voltage. Finally, it is the controller block. The power factor correction converter can be implemented using different circuit topologies, each of them with their advantages and disadvantages. As it may be observed, the input is an AC supply, the output power factor correction is a DC voltage. An ideal power factor correction makes sure that its input impedance is purely resistive. This allows maximum use of usable power or real power. The feedback signal needed for the control loop is the rectified AC voltage, input AC current, and output DC voltage. The output of the control block is a pulse width modulation signal. In this slide, three of the most common topologies of power factor correction implementation are presented. We will highlight advantages and disadvantages for each of them. These topologies are buck, boost, and buck boost converters. Starting with the buck converter, the output voltage provided to the load is always less than the input terminals, also known as step-down converters. For the purpose of power factor correction, the buck converter will function in discontinuous conduction mode. The boost converter has the output voltage greater than the input. When using this topology for power factor correction, the current is continuous, as shown in the current diagram. Continuous conduction mode allows a continuous current through the inductor. The combination of buck boost converter, as the name suggests, is a combination of a buck converter and a boost converter, so that the characteristics of both are achievable. The output voltage can be greater or lower than the input voltage. One disadvantage of buck and buck boost topologies is that the switch is not referred to the ground, which makes the driver circuitry more complex. The buck boost topology also inverts the sign of the output voltage, which brings another disadvantage when it comes to a cost-effective implementation of the sensing circuitry. The preferred method of implementing power factor correction and interleaved power factor correction is the boost converter due to the reduced current ripple, simplicity of gate driver implementation, and also because it meets the requirements of output voltage. The discontinuous conduction mode of buck and buck boost topologies would have a negative influence on the total harmonic distortion, or THD and higher gate driver cost. 
the boost converter's operation is based on the energy stored in inductance L1 as shown. When the Q1 transistor is on, the current through the inductance is rising and flyback diode D1 stops conduction. As soon as the Q1 switch opens, there's no path for the current that was flowing through the inductor except diode D1, the output capacitor C3, and the load. The D1 diode closes and starts conducting since the voltage on its anode is higher than the rectified voltage of AC source. The voltage across inductance L1 reverses its sign to maintain current flow. This way, both energy supplied by AC source and the one previously stored in the inductor are transferred to the load and the output capacitor through D1. The input rectified voltage, VAC, and the output DC voltage, VDC, are measured using resistor dividers, while the input current is measured using a shunt resistor. The role of the inductance in this power factor correction topology is essential. The physical size of the inductor increases with the power rating. Component size is one of the main reasons for implementing an interleaved power factor correction design. An interleaved power factor correction consists of two boost converters sharing the same load capacitor. As we can see, in the simplified schematic, if we assume we have the same inductance for each boost converter, we can see that the energy stored by the system is doubled. Since the energy stored in the inductors is a key factor for determining the output power capabilities of the system, the output power provided by a single stage power factor correction can be provided by an interleaved power factor correction with much lower inductance values. Lower inductance means smaller inductors for a given power rating. A simplified block diagram of a dual phase interleaved power factor correction is shown. As mentioned earlier, a second power factor correction converter is added sharing the same inputs and outputs. The difference between an interleaf power factor correction and a single stage power factor correction is that the two inductors are used for energy storage. Since energy should be distributed equally, a load balancing controller is added to the interleaf power factor correction to make sure the system compensates for variation in inductance values or feedback circuits. The interleaf power factor correction system has three main compensators, one for voltage, one for current, and one for load balance. Additionally, a feed-forward controller is implemented to compensate for sudden input voltage changes. The voltage error controller makes sure that the output voltage is not affected by load variations. The inputs to this controller are DC output voltage and the corresponding reference. The output of this controller is the current compensator reference. The current error controller regulates the phase and shape of the input current. This input current is the sum of both inductor currents, and it's measured using a shunt resistor. The output of this controller is a pulse width modulation output, which will be applied to the power MOSFETs. To balance the currents through both inductors, a load balance loop is implemented. The inputs to this compensator are the two currents, IM1 and IM2. If these currents are different, an imbalance is detected. The PI controller will regulate this error and adjust the MOSFET's duty cycle. The output of the load balance control loop will be a duty cycle correction term, which is subtracted from the pulse width modulation 1 to get the final duty cycle of the first boost converter, and it is added to the pulse width modulation 2 to determine the balanced duty cycle of the second boost converter. 
The interleaf power factor correction reference design board can be divided into six main functional blocks. The power factor correction boost circuitry, the AC input block, the power supply block, the fault circuitry block, and user's interface and programming block. The two inductors can be seen for both stages, and MOSFETs with the respective diodes are mon mounted underneath the board with a heat sink for better heat dissipation. This is a brief description about component selection for the interleaf power factor correction reference design. For the semiconductor component selection, voltage and current rating is important. Besides power factor, conduction and commutation losses are also important factors for component selection. These losses will determine the overall efficiency of the system. Semiconductor component losses represent about half of the total system losses. The inductance selection is also related to the output power rating. The higher the output power, the bigger the inductance will be. Another aspect to consider in the inductor selection is the required input current ripple. The output capacitor is chosen so that the output voltage ripple is within specifications. It also depends on the minimum holdup time so that the controller can act before the output capacitor loses its charge. The effective series resistance of the capacitor also affects the output voltage ripple. Therefore, the capacitance with the lowest possible effective series resistance is recommended. The effective series resistance of the capacitor can be lowered by coupling two capacitors in parallel if the board layout dimensions permit. Interleaf power factor correction allows a more efficient power factor correction design, offering space saving solutions. Interleaf power factor correction also reduces output current ripple since two inductors are sharing one load at different times. DSPIC digital signal controllers combine the right set of peripherals and computational power to enable interleaved power factor correction control with a single device. This reference design offers a starting platform for these types of applications and the modular design of the software makes it easy to understand and easy to add other functions.